Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on electric circuits. The topic of this video is electric potential energy, and we want to know what causes an electric charge to move, and how can you identify the locations of high and low electric potential energy. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. As I explain the idea of an electric potential energy in this video, I'll be relying upon a concept known as the electric field concept. I've discussed this concept in a previous video, this one, and I've left a link to that video in the description section of this video if you need to review it. Let's suppose that we have a charged Van de Graaff generator and we bring a balloon near the globe of that charged Van de Graaff generator. As the balloon is brought near but not touching, it begins to feel an interaction with the sphere of the Van de Graaff generator. We might say that the balloon experiences a field force as opposed to a contact force, an action that occurs over a distance of separation. One way of explaining this somewhat awkward interaction is to say that the sphere of the Van de Graaff generator creates an electric field, an alteration of the electric properties of the space that surrounds it, and any object like the balloon that's brought into that space feels the effect of the field and will interact differently because of the presence of the field. It's a way of explaining this somewhat awkward action at a distance that occurs despite any contact between the two objects. Electric field is a vector quantity. In describing it as a vector quantity, we mean that it has a magnitude or numerical value and a direction associated with it. The rule for the direction of the electric field at any given location in space around a source of charge is to say that it's the direction that a positive test object would be pushed or pulled when placed at that location. Here's a negative source of charge. Any positive test object would be pulled towards it. Thus, the electric field direction around this negative source charge is directed towards it. And here's a positive test charge. The direction of the electric field around it would be away from the positive source charge since a positive test charge would be pushed away from it. In general, we can say the direction of the electric field is always directed towards negative source charges or away from positive source charges. Gravitational fields are much like electric fields, but in the case of gravitational fields, the source of the field is a massive object, and through its field, it exerts action at a distance forces on other masses. Around the surface of the Earth, the direction of the gravitational field vector is directed downwards. So if we were to consider a case in which an object moves from a high elevation to a low elevation, this would be a movement in the direction of the gravitational field. Such a movement occurs naturally and does not require the exertion of an external force. Gravity, acting through its field, does work on the object to move the object from a high potential energy location to a low potential energy location. If we consider the opposite case of an object moving from a low elevation to a high elevation, this would be a movement against the gravitational field. In such a case, an external force would have to do work upon the mass in order to move it from this low elevation to the high elevation against the gravitational field. And in such cases, the work adds potential energy to the object, moving it from the low potential energy location to a high potential energy location. One of my main points in using this gravitational analogy is to emphasize that the movement of a mass within a gravitational field is always accompanied by a change in potential energy. If the mass moves in the direction of the gravitational field, there's a loss of potential energy. And if the mass moves uphill in, against the direction of the gravitational field, there's a gain in potential energy as that external force does work upon the mass. In an analogous manner, whenever an electric charge moves within an electric field, there's a corresponding change in electrical potential energy. For instance, if we had a charge at location A and moving with or in the direction of the electric field to location B, that would not require work by an external force. That would happen naturally since the motion is in the direction of the electric field. That would be analogous to moving downhill. That would be a motion from a high potential energy location to a low potential energy location. In contrast, if we had an electric field and there was a mass at location A and moving against the field to location B, that would require the exertion of a force by some external source. 
and work would be done by that force to add energy to the object. In such a case of the charge moving against the electric field, the charge would be moving from a location of low potential energy to a location of high potential energy. We just saw situations in which the electric field was created by a positive source charge. Now we'll consider situations where we have positive test charges moving within a field that is created by a negative source charge. In the first case, we'll consider an object starting at A, a positive test charge, and moving with the field towards the negative source charge to location B. In this situation, the movement is with the electric field. It's analogous to a mass moving downhill. It would not require work done by an external force, but would occur naturally with the help of the electric field, thus causing the object to move from that high energy location to the low energy location. In the opposite case of a positive test charge moving against the electric field from location A to location B, work would have to be done by an external force in order to move it against the electric field. And in such cases, the work would contribute potential energy to the object as it moves it from a location of low potential energy to a location of high potential energy. To summarize the movement of an electric charge within an electric field, we could say that there are two general types of motion. First, there's the movement of the charge in the direction of the electric field. We could describe this as going with nature. It occurs naturally with the help of the electric field. No external force is required to cause this. If it were a mass, we would describe it as moving downhill. This would correspond to a positive test charge moving away from a positive source or towards a negative source charge. The second type of movement would be the movement against the electric field. We could describe this as going against nature. It doesn't occur naturally, but requires the intervention of an external force to do work upon the charge, moving it from a location of low potential energy to a location of high potential energy. This would correspond to the motion of a positive test charge towards a positive source or away from a negative source. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are two resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. Electric field hockey is a game in which you have to think hard about the movement of a charge within an electric field in order to move that charge into a goal. The second is a tutorial page from our website, a great way to refresh some of the ideas from this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.